Today we're talking about harnessing the power of the subconscious mind. This is an overview that's going to prep you for getting into the hypnosis and all the crazy ass stuff we're going to do with NLP later on in the series and the channel. The human body's most complex organ is the brain. A lot of researchers and doctors are still unlocking all the crazy ass stuff in there. I listen to Huberman podcasts all the time. Neuroscience is ridiculous. And even though scientists are working to figure out the whole brain process, it's still a super complex area. They're going through how mating dynamics work. They're going through how memory works, how intellect works. They're making up all these new types of intelligences. It's pretty ridiculous. But in my training, when I came up through NLP and hypnosis, we split the mind into two or three different parts, depending on what model you were looking at. Back when I was growing up, they said that we only use 10 to 15% of our brain at the time. And as neuroscience came along and started measuring everything, we realized that we only use 15% of our brain at any one given time, but we're still using all of it most of the time. But our capacity is much larger. In hypnosis school, they taught us that the mind and the body are connected, and the gut has its own brain, and we have a holographic memory system that we use that are that's connected to all the body stuff, which kind of cross-references with Van der Kolk's and uh, Peter Levine's theories of having emotions trapped and stuck, traumas trapped, stuck different areas of the body. It's all really fascinating stuff. But as an overview, we're going to look at the mind as a split between conscious and subconscious. Later on, we'll pack some other things on top of it. But what we see in our conscious world is going to be the things that we take in from our senses and how we represent it to ourselves and how we store it underneath in our subconscious, which is a much larger part of our mind that has access to whole different things, things from childhood and trauma responses and all these things that we, we don't look at on a day-to-day -day basis. Although the two parts of the mind play different roles, they really complement each other. One cannot exist without the other one. The stuff from the environment through our senses, the signals are received by the conscious mind, which sends them down into the subconscious. Following that, the subconscious mind receives these signals from the conscious mind and then uses them to carry out all the thought processes and then deals with the management of emotions. It transmits signals back to the brain in form of sensations and after processing the thought. And this is the procedure. You come in from the outside world through the senses, through the conscious mind, through the critical faculty into the subconscious mind. And then the subconscious mind does things in the nervous system and sends it back up to be understood by the conscious mind. And that's how it was explained to me in hypnosis school. All you neuroscientists can hate on me and leave comments down below. If you can get access to the subconscious mind and play around inside of it, then you have a lot more abilities and you have a lot more brain power, so to speak, to work through the difficulties and the problems in your life. On this channel, we're going to go through a whole lot of hypnosis stuff, a whole lot of self-hypnosis stuff, a whole lot of trance work. But for now, to use your subconscious mind effectively, you have to learn how to listen to your inner voice. Your conscious mind is very, very good at focus. It's very good at blowing up the big problem and everything that's right in front of you. But the subconscious mind generally has a larger, more adaptable knowledge base to draw from. And thus, it tends to know how your life should go better than your conscious mind does in a moment. You're going to win half the battles in your life. You start to employ the stuff that comes out of your subconscious, the inner voice that talks to you. Even if you don't quite know how it works out logically in the moment from your conscious perspective, if you kind of listen to that intuition, if you listen to that inner voice, you're going to have a lot less difficulty moving through the world. A lot of the high-level concepts like self-esteem and self-worth are built upon your ability to trust your inner voice, to trust your intuition, and to trust yourself when you make decisions. You've probably heard me touch on the integrity with yourself as what builds self-confidence. That's a core concept we have here in Intimacy Liberation Army. But your ability to move forward in life is predicated on your ability to trust yourself to take those steps moving forward, rather than just trusting the environment to hurdle you in some sort of direction and have you make it out okay. A lot of your decision making comes from the ways that you were modeled as as a child or some traumatic events that have happened between you and the world as you were growing up. You trust yourself to employ the things that were installed right around that time. And if you didn't install successful mechanisms of dealing with things like social power, uh, relationships with other people, caring for people, getting your needs met, asserting yourself, all of those things. If you didn't install those things in when you were younger, then you're going to have to 
rely on the baseline of what you were modeled by your caretakers or by the people around you when you were young. And then if you do that inefficiently now, it just seems like it's a normal everyday thing to respond the way that you do. I spent 20 years of my life as a quintessential people pleaser before I realized that I could get respect, assert myself, have boundaries, and be able to affect the world around me by the way that I communicated and acted. And that was all coming from my subconscious and what it had learned growing up under somebody who wanted to give me approval based on whether or not I performed well. As you start to unravel this stuff, it can be a little unnerving because the basis of your reality is predicated on the stuff in there that you don't quite have access to in your conscious brain. So that's a quick thought about the dichotomy of the human mind, the subconscious and the conscious and the split between them. We're gonna dive way more into this stuff as we start to talk about belief systems, value systems, and the things that we're gonna shift around to ultimately give you a better shot at excelling in your dating life. If that was too theoretical for you and you want something practical, Jackson and I just shot a workshop called The Simple Approach Formula. It talks about how to approach people in random places and will allow you to get over the fear for just long enough to go meet some new people. Check that out. It's free. It's in the link below. We shoot this stuff every day, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, stay awesome.